Hello everyone, my name is Wall Street, and today we are here to watch episode 4 of Over the Hill. To Burn, to burn Times by Angry Welshman Productions. But when it comes to this type of stuff, I try to not look at the thumbnails. I saw the thumbnail for the last episode, and I am scared. <laughs> I am scared of what's going to happen in these next three episodes. So, I'm going to try to listen a little bit more carefully. Yes, I know that's going to include maybe less talking and actually commentating. But I want to know what's going to happen between looking like the Mafia and what's going to happen to Pennyworth Railway. So, without further ado, let's jump right on in. Alright. Can't wait to see what's going to happen. Oh. Mr. Edmondson, Mr. Dibton, and Mr. Davies worked through the week to get die finished. His significantly reduced overhaul had cut as many corners as possible, leaving lots of problems unresolved. Mr. Julian, Mr. Stobold, and Mr. Anthony tried their best to repair the Avon Lewis clifftop, but it was no good. The track bed needed a lot more work, and many mm. sleepers needed relaying. By Friday evening, Mr. Edmondson finally announced that Dye was in a state to test his boiler. Oh, and the boiler inspector paid a special visit to the shed. You know, as a friend, you're lucky I am a supporter of this line, Mr. Edmondson. I should charge you double time for calling me out on a Friday night. Ah, uh, come on, Alfred. You just know how tight we're cutting it. Our first train is tomorrow. Then let's hope this engine of yours passes the exam. It doesn't look like you've even started his overhaul. I can assure you that we have done everything we can, sir. I just hope it's enough. Well, his boiler was in good nick, despite being in a scrapyard for several years. They did a great job in crew. I've inspected much worse boilers than this one, Mr. Davies. Okay, that's a good sign. Well, did we pass? Yes, Mr. Davies. I'm yes. happy to say that your engine's boiler has met all legal standards as set by the boiler inspectorate. I will sign a certificate for you. This certificate is only valid for one year. Aren't boiler certificates supposed to last ten years, Mr. Inspector? Yes, but I am giving a restricted certificate because he will need a full overhaul sooner rather than later. Makes sense. I just hope he'll last long enough to prove himself. Only one year? But surely that isn't enough time. Relax, Mr. Stovall. Once the inspection is complete, we'll have more of a leg to stand on to the railway community. I am hoping that we can persuade someone else to bring their engine here. Now that Mr. Hancock has withdrawn his support, that won't be easy, Mr. Davies. Don't worry, Di will be alright, won't you, Di? Yes, I will. I just hope that welded frame holds. Di was nervous, despite just having passed his boiler examination and being steamed up again for the first time in years. He felt terrible. The idea of his frames being so fragile scared him, and he was dreading his first run. Well, we ought to you can't live in fear. We only have a couple I know you got a lot of bombs, but... Line, and we still don't know if these coaches will run properly. You gotta make do with what difficulties well you have. As they were soon I know from in. experience. They climbed into Dai's cab. Well, Dai, this is it. Are you ready? No. Okay. Right, he's ready. Right away, driver. And with clouds of smoke and steam, Dai moved forward and out of the workshop. He felt stiff as his valve gear creaked and groaned into action at last. He winced in pain as his valve gear ground together. Ugh, I'm stiff. I'm so stiff. Keep going, Dai. You can do it. Dai puffed harder, and soon he felt the grease and oil working its way into the system. It felt wonderful. Pain ceased very quickly. He gave a loud toot on his whistle. Just then he heard a cheer, and 
suddenly realised that a crowd of townspeople had gathered on the road to watch his first journey. Well, we'll have an audience tonight, Mr. Davies. <laughs> you should put on a show for them. No show tonight. Yep, yeah, take it easy. It's all about keeping these wheels turning. There will be no thrashing or second valves until die is restored properly. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I know what you mean, Mr. Dibden. And don't you worry. We already have put on enough of a show for these people tonight. They're counting on us, you know. And we are counting on you, Di. Mr. Edmondson switched the points, and Di reversed onto the main platform of Lime Deer Dog Station. Here, he was coupled up to his coaches for the first time. A crowd of people had gathered on the platform, taking Dice's photograph as the crew coupled him up. Okay, the backpack is connected. Open the ejector, please! Right you are. Mr. Dibden opened the ejector, and Dye felt the rush of steam passing through his smoke box. My ejector's leaking. Aye, I'll sort it out later, Dye. We've got bigger problems right mm -hmm. now. Bigger problems? Look, so it breaks and go off properly. Is that the problem? Well, not if your coach is to have a wheel class. Of course it's a blooming problem. Hit it with a hammer, Matthew. Mr. Edmondson hit the brake pad with a hammer, and it finally Okay. Rest. See? Always works. If in doubt, give it a clout. I hope you don't adopt the same philosophy when you're driving my engine. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Julian, who would act as guard, came to the engine. All right. All my checks are done, Mr. Davy. I've spoken with the signalman at Penrith Junction. We have permission to run as far as Penrith, then run around and return to Land Ear Dog. But I thought we were going to run into Blind Barris. British Railways changed their mind. They won't let us run on the main line until we get our light railway out. Well, that's fair enough, I suppose. There's nothing we can do about it right now. Are you ready, Di? Um, right, he's ready. Let's get going. It's 8 p.m. now. I want to get some sleep before we open tomorrow. Mr. Julian the guard blew his whistle and waved his flag, and with clouds of smoke and steam, Di set off along the line. He felt the weight of his coaches immediately. Oh, I. Dye puffed harder, and soon they headed out of the Landier Dog's suburbs. Crowds of people had gathered on the hillside to watch them run. Dye looked closely, and he swore he could see a familiar figure in the crowd of people. But before he could check himself, the figure had disappeared. Dye uh, that doesn't members, sound so good. And soon reached the steep gradient towards Pantigasso. Mr. Edmondson, who was firing, stoked Dye's fire with a long drag. Dai felt happy as he felt the warmth of the fire heating his boiler and the rush of wind passing his fire. They headed into the first tunnel. Dai loved tunnels. He always felt so powerful when they were inside. The noise was tremendous. Soon they came out of the tunnel and slowed for the arrival at Pantigasog Station. Here a large crowd welcomed Dye's brakes were applied, and soon the train came to a stand. Dye felt happier than ever before. Everything was going so smoothly, or so he thought. Well, Coach Free's brakes are jammed on again. I've tried bashing it with a hammer, but it's not working. Let me try. And with his brutal northern strength, <laughs> okay. Mr. Edmondson smashed the brake pads free once again, and the coach rolled backwards slightly as the brakes released. <sighs> Works every time. So far, so good. 
Let's Why do I have a funny feeling that he's going to hit one time and the bike's going to fall Mr. off? Or something close to that? When he was ready, blew his whistle and waved his flag to call them forward across the crossing. But I'm happy that he's moving, he's, he has to train for the move. He rolled over the level crossing as crowds of people... I, you're doing good for having so many palms. Once the train had passed, Mr. Julian closed the gates and climbed aboard. Mr. Edmondson had stoked the ice fire ready for the next section of line. It's a long climb from here up to the cliff top. Plus, we'll have to slow down for that bad bit. I felt nervous as Mr. Dibden opened the regulator. Soon Dai was making good time as they approached the incline. He felt the load come onto the drawbar, and he pulled hard. Mr. Edmondson checked him. Steady, Dai. Take it easy. We've got plenty of steam. Dai didn't feel so confident, but soon he saw the bridge and the tunnel mount ahead. Mr. Dibden closed the regulator and slowed down. He felt himself slowing, but just before he reached a standstill, Mr. Dibden had opened the regulator Dai puffed onwards and soon emerged on the avenue in Clifton. This was the section he had been dreading. Steady, Dai. Steady. Dai puffed onwards. He looked at the track as he went, and he could see just how bad the supporting wall had become. He continued on carefully, and soon felt himself leaning over towards the river. I don't like this. I thought we fixed this section. It's been it's money on the one stuff. I powered on Soon, the coaches drew clear of the cliff top, and they set off again. Dai felt much happier now, and the level gradient gave him a chance to catch his breath. Dai wasn't as fit as he used to be. They rolled into Pontimont. Once again, a crowd had gathered to see the train pass through. Mr. Dibden and Mr. Edmondson went to check the coaches while Mr. Davy stoked the fire. Okay. Soon they were ready to leave, but Mr. Dibden noticed something peculiar. A bus was waiting just before the level crossing. There was a familiar figure sitting at the controls. No, that cannot be. But before he could continue his sentence, Mr. Julian blew his whistle and waved his flag, and I set off again. What's the prom? I mean, yeah, he's... Mr. Edmondson saw the same figure sat in the driver's seat. Is, is that who I think it is? Did you see him too? Yes, I did. See who? It was Mr. Bruce driving that bus. Driving a bus? No, come on. Pull the other one. I'm being serious, Mr. Davies. It was him. I'm sure of it. Well, even if it was, we have more important things to consider, right? Yeah. We can discuss this later. Mr. I don't know what's the big promise, though, so. They were sure that it was Mr. Bruce, but they knew they had the job to do, so they put it out of their minds. Thy trundled along at a steady pace as they began to climb towards Abbasite. The train pulled into a deserted station. The sun was beginning to set, and the temperature beginning to fall. Where is everyone? I thought they wanted to see us. It's getting late. We need to pick up the pace. We'll have to run non-stop to Penoth Junction. Mr. Dibden took on water, while Mr. Edmondson and Mr. Julian set the points for the next section. Are we happy when we've got a single one to do this, Mr. Julian? You and me both. Wait a minute. Uh, I'm not going to say until I get more to evidence to prove my theory. He's wearing a bus company to go against him. Something so seem odd. I, I don't know. Don't want to feel control you by it. Wall Street. Ah, damn. The sun finally set as they passed through Nancy Glynn. 
and Mr. Davies gave a long, hard whistle as they passed his house. I noticed that you put your own whistleboard upside your house, Mr. Davies. How can you run a railway without having some fun, eh? You can have a little bit of fun, just not too much. He began to forget about the pain in his frames. He trundled along through the Welsh countryside steadily. They soon reached the summit of the line. I began to coast towards Pennyog Station. They steamed past Pennyog Colliery and rushed through Blind Coil. Finally, with some relief, they reached Journey's End and crossed the Pennoyth Valley Viaduct, rolling into Pennoyth Junction only nine minutes late. I mean, not bad for an engine that has a lot of bombs and just got the boil pits. To me, that's not bad. He was uncoupled and they quickly ran around the train. Sadly, though, the return journey wouldn't be as easy. What do you mean it's not going to be so easy? Come on, Thomas, stop messing about. Have you connected the hoses? Yes, I have. Open the ejector. I have opened the blooming injector. Got 21 inches on my gauge. But the brakes are hard on. And you haven't connected the vac bag. I have connected the ruddy vac bag, Matthew. Whoa, gentlemen, please settle down. Let's sort this out calmly. We won't get anywhere by shouting. Coach's brakes were jammed hard on, and no matter how many times Matthew opened the ejector to create a vacuum, they would not release. They worked and worked and worked. Crap. But still, no matter how hard they tried, the brakes on the coaches were... Hammer time? The night wore on, and soon it was very dark. Well, guys, look, it's nearly midnight. We need to be getting back. I think it's fair to say we cannot fix this here. The vacuum cylinders need to be removed from overhauls. They're just shot. Agreed. But what are we going to do about the coaches? We cannot pull coaches with no brakes. The inspectors won't like that. Hmm. What is the problem? Just then, Mr. Julian remembered something. I'll tell you an idea. If we can remove the brake blocks from these coaches, then just pull a brake van as well? The workmen thought for a moment. And then Mr. Edmondson laughed. Mr. Julian, that's a brilliant idea. That would work. Is that legal? Well, Mr. Dibden, is it legal? Um, yes, of course it is. But it, it won't be comfortable for the passengers. But as long as there is some form of brake vehicle attached to the train, it doesn't matter if it's a coach or a brake vehicle. Alright. There we go. I, Problem solved. Excellent thinking. This whole show is basically I'm adapt and conquer. Face, you know. Love it. Die simmered impatiently as the workmen removed the brake blocks from the coaches. This proved to be dangerous work, as the coaches shifted each time a block was removed. Time marched onwards, and by six o'clock in the morning, the train was finally ready to leave. Tired, beaten, and exhausted, the engine crew climbed back into Dai's cab, and they set off along the line at last. <sighs> The sun rose above the mountains, lighting up the valley as Di puffed along the line, his coaches bouncing loudly behind them. Wait, is that done? It was very late indeed when they finally returned to Landiado. It's just me or is there no breaking coach thing? Instead of the service and the rest that Di had been hoping for all night, his train was shunted straight into the platform. Dye was cold and watered, ready for the first train. Come on, please, can we have a rest? No, Dye. We need to get ready for the first train. Mm. You can have a break for half an hour while we call you up and get the brake van ready. But don't you go to sleep. But it was too late. Dye had fallen asleep. Mr. Davies chuckled to himself. 
climbed into Leslie's cab to collect the brake. Okay, I see, I see now. The train was shunted and made ready, and by nine o'clock, the passengers were climbing aboard the first train. Mr. Davies was shocked to see that so many people had turned up for the first train. Blimey, we'll need the Royal Scot for this blooming lot. <laughs> and the Flying Scotsman too. The passengers climbed aboard, buzzing excitedly. Di was made ready for his first journey. Leslie and Ian called out to Di from the shed. Good luck, Di. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. Hope, okay. hope no, you do good. Yes, yes, we did. We made it this far, right? Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it, man. Di backed down onto the coaches. Mr. Davies came to speak to him. Well, all set, Di? All set, sir. That's the spirit. Let's do this. Good start. Okay. Soon enough, he had reached Penoyth Junction, and he slowed to a stand <laughs> at the platform. He felt very proud of what he and the team had achieved today. Mr. Davies came to see him again. Well done, Di. We did it. We've done it, lads. I cannot believe we've pulled this off. After all the problems we've had, we've blooming won. Imagine if they didn't spend the money on the wits. How much better I would have been. And standing there was Mr. Hancock, one of the potential Damn. investors of the line, and his daughter, Kyrie. He had returned to the line to see how they did on their first open day. Mr. Davies, I believe I owe you an apology, sir. An apology? Whatever for? For being so quick to make a judgment against you. Mistakes happen, and no matter how hard you try, problems will always arise. You can have brand new machines, but if they break down, you need to have what it takes to solve the problem. Precisely. But you have proved to me you have what it takes. I must say that I'm very glad to be giving you a second chance. I withdraw my earlier statement. I am most definitely interested in investing this line. Yes. Mr. Davies felt stunned. He didn't know what to say. But only if there's an approval from other investors. I have to know that I'm bringing my engine and rolling stock to a railway that is secure. Keep on running at these high standards, and you'll have no trouble convincing the board of investors to back our cause. Oh, I... Our cause? What do you mean, our cause? Yes, sir, our cause. I'm in the process of making a business plan for this line. In order to convince the other investors, we need to have a solar business plan in place. And after what I've seen today, I believe we have one. Many thanks for your time, gentlemen. I'll be seeing you all again very soon. 
Dyke felt the water in his boiler boil in excitement. They had finally achieved some success. Dai returned to the shed that night and was given three cheers by the engines <laughs> and volunteers. The engines chatted whilst the volunteers celebrated their first running day. Well done, Dai. You did it. It's been a long struggle up until now. It's nice to see some results. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I'm, well, I'm yeah. He deserves it. You tired, Dai? Yeah. I've been up for the last 48 hours without a break. I'm not as young as you, player, you know. <laughs> The engines laughed, but as Dai closed his eyes, in the back of his mind was the deep feeling of responsibility. He knew that the whole operation relied on his reliability and his determination. As the volunteers celebrated, Dai fell asleep, a happy and contented engine. Whew! Warn yourself. The significant event is about to happen. I just wish I'm the best of luck. I wish Dai the best of luck and the way away. But it's only a bleak mention of the guy. So. I'm hoping. Everything will go well. I mean. I don't know what else to say. It's a really positive episode. I'm happy for him. See you next week.